Have you noticed how much anger and hate there is in the world? Uh, if we uh, look on some of social media, uh, people are calling people names. Uh, they call them uh, stupid, uh, ignorant. Uh, if you don't see it my way, you're wrong. There's so much hate and anger in this world. And and it, it really, it, it breaks my heart, and I know it breaks our Lord's heart as well. I want to uh, share a little story with you uh, uh, about a, a young lad who was having trouble. He, he had emotional impairment, uh, uh, behavioral uh, uh, skills that he just lacked. And he had seated himself in the floor of a drugstore, and he began to play with bottles off the shelf. And the druggist came over and, uh, in a sharp tone, scolded him and uh, told him to put those bottles back, but he didn't do it. And uh, around the corner, uh, a young girl, a little sister, came up to the boy, and she put her arm around the boy and whispered in his ear, and shortly thereafter, he put all the bottles up on and back in, in place where they belonged. And uh, the little girl looked up to the druggist and said, you see, sometimes that type of tone doesn't work. What I have to do is I love it into him. And uh, if we need to get something done, we just speak to him in a loving tone. And she said, I just love it into him. And I'm telling you, I think we need to get to a place where we need to start loving it into each other because few of us respond to being scolded, pushed, driven, or harassed. Those simple six words, I just loved it into him, deserves to be mounted on every wall in every home in America. There was a song that was written back in the 60s. It's called What the World Needs Now is Love. It goes like this. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. In the scriptures, in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, it said, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. I see some points coming out of this. Love, number one, should benefit others. Our society has a tendency to confuse love and lust. Unlike lust, God's kind of love is directed outward towards others, not inward toward ourselves. It is unselfish, and it goes against our natural inclination. It's difficult to have God's kind of love. But it is possible when you have Christ in your life and you are being driven by the Spirit of God. It is possible to practice this kind of love only in the power of God. And he sets our desires and our instincts so that we can give love while expecting nothing in return. And the more we become like Christ, the more love, God's kind of love, we will show to others. So, number one, love does benefit others. Love is a command. We will be known as true followers of Christ by the demonstration of our love. John 13, 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. If, it's a conditional statement, if you have loved one another, do you want to be known as a disciple of Christ, as a follower of Christ? That's who I am. How about you? So we see that love benefits others. 
Love is a command given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. But love is also a choice. It is selfless. By reaching far beyond our friends, our family, towards enemies and persecutors. Therefore, Christian love is not a feeling. It's a choice. You choose to be more like our Father in heaven, or you choose to be more like the world. And there's going to be a day that we will stand before our Lord or our God if we do not believe. Matthew 5, 43 and 48 says this, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his Son rise on the evil and on the good, sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Folks, if you're not a believer in the word of God and of Christ, you will not understand this. But I'm speaking to the believers right now. You have a responsibility to demonstrate the love of God. You have a responsibility to show that you are a follower of Christ, if in fact you are. If we want to make a change in this world, we must start demonstrating the goodness of Christ and of our Father in this world. There's many that will not come to know God because there are some who are called by his name who do not act as they should. I'm going to tell you, if you do not have this kind of love that we're talking about, you are not his. So let's think about it before we put a lot of hateful stuff out on social media to where people can see. Yes, there, there are people that are difficult to love. But just what if, what if by your demonstration of the love of Christ makes a difference in that person's life? Could it help change the world? Could it help change their world? I want you to think about that. Love one another as Christ has loved you. Please. Please, if you have faith in him and trust in him, show and demonstrate and experience his love. What you give, you will get. God bless each and every one of you.